Well, a bright meteor all lit up the sky across Queensland last night. Joining me live to discuss it is cosmologist and astrophysicist Brad Tucker. Brad, as always, appreciate your time today. For those who saw it, they're calling it a pretty epic spectacle. What did you make of it? Yeah, look, I think that's a fair description of it. This was a, a very bright uh, meteor flash over a large portion of form, uh, far north Queensland. Um, so this definitely was a meteor. This was a bit of rock, most likely a bit of an asteroid that broke off uh, and burned up in the skies about 9.22 p.m. And it was caught across all sorts of dash cams, video cameras, mobile phones, you name it. Uh, and it was because I think it was, you know, it was at a convenient time, Saturday evening, lots of people still out and about in their evening, uh, and a relatively populated area. Um, and we do know the region was quite large, as south as Mackay, uh, north, northern even parts of Cairns, and to the west. So a large part of it seeing this bright meteor, which would have been about a half a meter to a meter in size. And given that the reports of a sonic boom of it probably breaking up, there very well indeed be meteorites, bits of the fragments of the rock that have landed on the ground. And very exciting indeed. Now, look, you've also had some excitement recently. You were part of a team which saw a supernova explode multiple times. Yeah, this is really cool. So when you get a massive amount of mass, you, um, you get something called gravitational lensing. This is where all of the gravity of those objects can bend and magnify light. And what happens in this case uh, is light from behind it, um, this supernova explosion um, around this gravity can be magnified and sometimes appear multiple times. Now, what's cool about the multiple appearances, where each dot in this image is one of those appearances, is you can look at the arrivals of them and time them. They all happen at, at the same point and therefore time and space, but they all took different paths through space because they were moving around this kind of lens in space. So you can time the time it left, measure when it arrived, and actually then calculate how much it traveled through space and therefore how much the universe itself traveled through space. Like trains leaving a station going to, from Melbourne to Sydney but taking different paths, you can look at the timing and arrival of those to figure out what exactly happened in the intervening space. So a really special discovery that we had. Yes, yeah, certainly is. Now, China's reusable space plane has landed after a nine-month stint in orbit. Yeah, this is the, the longest time this um, space drone has been in orbit. Now, most people believe it mimics the X-37B that you're seeing on your screen here. This is built f by Boeing for the U.S. Air Force. Now, we know the U.S. Air Force is one that is able to be in orbit for at least four years at a time. It goes on a rocket, it stays in orbit, performing a number of functions. Now, this is the longest time China's has been in orbit. We don't have an image of it uh, that has been uh, obtained um, via Western media, essentially. Uh, and we do know in this case, it was at least releasing things into orbit. The idea potentially was it released a satellite or payload into orbit. But then a few months after releasing it, we actually saw that payload disappear. So it potentially could be releasing and pulling things in, either to clean up junk, um, to deploy uh, satellites and remove old satellites, or testing something entirely different. So part of the growing technology that's happening in space that crosses the border of exploration and what uses for the military may be up there. And Brad, NASA has awarded Blue Origin a contract to develop a lunar lander. Yes, yeah, so uh, a couple of years ago, NASA announced that it was gonna partner with Starship and SpaceX to use a, a retrofitted um, or modified version of the Na uh, SpaceX and Starship to go back and forth to the lunar surface. But they want multiple plans also for further and later moon landings. So this now, this new contract with Blue Origin will deploy a lander uh, on the surface of the moon, aiming for one of those later Artemis missions. So maybe Artemis four or five, or six uh, towards the end of the decade. So it's just a part of the further competition happening between SpaceX and Blue Origin, but also NASA funding the development of some of these private companies, which as we've seen time and time again, accelerates what can happen, ultimately saves NASA money and allows for multiple options for space missions, for groups into space and for purposes. So, so definitely exciting time, not just for Blue Origin, but for the moon race that is definitely heating up. Yeah, it certainly is. And just finally, closer to home, Australian scientists have found the radio signals from an exploding white dwarf. Yeah, so this is kind of weird. So sometimes when you get a white dwarf, this is something 
our sun will be in about six billion years. If it comes near another star, uh, it could actually suck off gas and explode. But what happens is you get a lot of the explosion, a lot of the energy leaves in the X-rays, then the ultraviolet, then the colors we can see with our eyes. Occasionally, you get radio waves, and the radio waves tells us a lot about a certain type of energy and composition inside the star that we can't see without it being exploded and producing these radio waves. Um, so led by a, a a former PhD student in Australia, Eric Kuhl, and his supervisor, Stuart, uh, they did a really cool discovery detecting this, the first of its kind, really giving us the clues about what happens inside that star. How does that star trigger its explosion, and how does that explosion travel through the system, creating it to blow up, which actually eventually turns into new stars, so a really critical piece in the puzzle made in our own backyard. It certainly is. Brad Tucker, fascinating to chat to you again. Thank you for your time today. Thanks.